Welcome to Garden Delights. I'm Susan Howington, Family Consumer Science Agent with the Henry County Cooperative Extension Service, partnership with the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension Service. Today we're going to talk about blueberries. We'll also hear from Frank Hancock, our Agriculture and Natural Resource Agent, and he's going to talk about the garden, but I'm not going to give the secret he's going to be talking about. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Welcome back to Garden Delights. Today we're going to be talking about blueberries and I will tell you it's one of my favorite fruits. And I will tell you also I could eat it all year round. So let's talk about these wonderful blueberries. You know, when they're in season, it's even better because you can either pick your own or you can find some really good deals at the grocery store. So let's talk about why it's so good for you. It is saturated fat free. It's almost fat free. It is sodium and cholesterol free and it has a lot of vitamin C and as far as the blueberries go you have to eat the whole thing because you want to get that good fiber from eating that whole blueberry so we want to have fiber in our diet this is a great way to get one now let's talk about selection so when you're buying your blueberries at the grocery store um, use they're in some kind of container so you do want to look at the top the sides and also that bottom because that tells you the blueberries are looking good because you're looking for a gray kind of a smoky look to the blueberries. You're also going to look too to make sure the uniform size that they're all looking about the same size which is really good. If you see a lot of mush on the bottom of it that tells you those blueberries have probably been sitting there too long so you might want to skip that container and go to another one. Um, so you're looking for that when you're selecting your blueberries. Now, as far as blueberries staying, as far as your storage, they will stay in your refrigerator 10 to about 14 days, which is a great thing. But hopefully you've come up with a recipe or some way to eat those in those 10 to 14 days. If not, I will tell you this, blueberries freeze very, very well. But if you're going to freeze them, don't wash them. Freeze them as they are. And I will tell you, it freezes very well on a cookie sheet. Then you can put them in a Ziploc bag once they're frozen a little bit. And then when you get ready to eat them or make it in a recipe, that's when you're gonna wash them. So just keep that in mind when you're working with those blueberries. So when we come back, you're gonna hear from Frank Hancock and he's gonna tell you about this pest that's been in the garden that he's almost got it under control to get it out of the garden. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Okay, today we're back up here in the community garden, kind of looking around. Uh, uh, our tomatoes, a lot of our tomatoes have just about finished producing for the year. We still got some coming on that were planted a little bit later. Uh, but this time of the year is when we get invaded with leaf-footed bugs. And we've been doing a little research every, every year on the best way to control these leaf-footed bugs. They're a difficult bug to control. If you, if you try to spray them, they're going to fly. You can hand pick them and, and be successful at doing that until you touch a leaf or something while you're reaching for one and then they're going to fly. So they're very hard to hand pick. Uh, we have, have tried to control them just simply by vacuuming, vacuuming them off. We've got a, a, a big handheld electric uh, uh, battery powered vacuum that we adapted a snout on to, to collect them. Uh, and last year we collected a lot of bugs. In fact, we, we pretty well controlled the population with that vacuum cleaner last year. Uh, this year we started doing a little bit different. I got a little bit different kind of vacuum here where I can catch them about 10 at the time and then we're putting them in this in this little cricket box here i don't know if you can see them in there or not some of them are up in the other end but uh, then we are trying different things that say that they will kill leaf-footed bugs and we're just spraying them and observing them see how long it takes for it to kill them and whether it does kill them some things we spray them with 
you have survivors that uh, the next day there's still one crawling around. So uh, we've, we've kind of zeroed in on a, a, a product here that uh, looks like it does a pretty good job. Uh, but, but there again, even if you spray the plant, if you don't get the spray on them, they're going to fly away and, and you're not going to kill them. So we, we've sort of decided if we're going to spray them, that we're going to target them with uh, the jet spray out of the nozzle. Now, the things that we used in this experiment are things that we can buy at the store that are in spray bottles that are ready to use that are available to homeowners. We, we're targeting this mostly to what homeowners can do and what's available to them if they want to get rid of their leaf-footed bugs. So um, that's if it's there may be some other products that will kill them, but if they're not available in that spray bottle form uh, and then available to us when we went shopping at the big box stores in the garden centers and in the hardware stores, then, uh, you know, so basically we wound up with, with four products that we're testing this time. In the past, we've tried spraying the plant with uh, some organic things like, like Pyganic. I think we tried some Azadiractin one time. We've tried insecticidal soap. None of that seems to bother the population very much. So today we're just going to observe here to tell you a little bit about what we're doing and i've got a product that in a few minutes we'll go through here and just knock them off and and i'm pretty sure that it's going to kill the ones we shoot uh, we've also tried a salt gun at one point in time the salt gun it'll kill them but it, it doesn't kill them clean and if you if you miscalculate and hit the tomato with the salt gun it does more damage than the leaf-footed bug does so we kind of ruled it out early on, although it, it will kill leaf-footed bugs. Uh, so that's sort of what we're dealing with here is the leaf-footed bugs. And we've been catching them. Uh, we caught these this morning. Uh, they're not all that easy to, to catch. And this little vacuum cleaner is not very powerful. So if you, uh, if you try to, to catch one, uh, and I don't know if I can, but let me set this down a minute where I can concentrate and we'll try to catch one. If we can't, we'll, uh, we'll just say we didn't catch one. And you see they're very agile. They will leave the first chance they get. <laughs> All three, all three of those left before I caught one. That's why I went ahead and caught some this morning before we got started. So I'll find one here in a minute that we can catch and just show you how that works. We catch, we catch 10. We like this little vacuum cleaner here, although it's not, it's not real powerful, but it, it'll catch them and I can see when I get 10 caught and I'll put them in this cricket box and we'll go from there. So. Let me see where they settle down here and we'll see if we can't get one in this tube. So that's, that's kind of how we go about collecting them. Uh, and uh, young people can do this better than I can because their reflexes are better than mine. But the, you you got to get on them and you got to be quick to to capture them. Uh, let's see if I can find another one sitting here. And see now I got three, so it's doable. In, in fact, you could take this little vacuum cleaner and walk through here and and eliminate the problem, but you'd have to do it regularly. They, you know, they're reproducing while we're speaking. So, so there's three that we caught there in just a, a minute or two. We also had three get away when I first started off here. So you can't just, you can't just haphazardly do this. You got to really get into it so you can, so you can catch them. But um, see if I see another one here right quick.
That one got away. He was tangled up in the leaves there. I couldn't get to him. Anyway, that's how you get them. I got four in here now. And, uh, and so we just go through catch 10. Uh, we take them and put them in this, in this cricket uh, thing right here. And, and then we'll spray them. Uh, let me get one of the products over here that works the best. And we'll go through here and spray some of them. Um, this is not going to kill them spraying the plant like that. So if we take the that spray right there, if we find another one sitting here, I'll try to demonstrate that for you. And uh, and by doing this, I'm not I'm not spraying the whole plant, so therefore I'm not uh, you know I'm not getting on my honeybees or spraying any flowers or anything. We're just we're just knocking off the leaf-footed bugs. And he's got to get wet with this spray in order to for him to die. And we see results, uh, you know, once I hit him with that blast, he's done for. And, and you see, I, I don't have to spray the whole plant. I'm just targeting the leaf-footed bugs. And, uh, and you will reduce the numbers. You can reduce the numbers if you come out here every day with this little vacuum cleaner or you can reduce the numbers if you, if you come out here and target them with the spray. This particular spray that I'm using proved to be uh, the best for, for killing them the quickest. It's got cyflutherin in it, this rose and flower cat. It's not something that you would really look for in the store for your tomatoes, but it's labeled for tomatoes and it's also labeled for leaf-footed bugs. So, so it is a, a product that's labeled for what we're trying to do with it, uh, even though it's not obvious by, by reading the label, by reading the, the front of it here for rose and flower care. Okay, I think we're uh, we're just about ready to go back inside and see what Susan's fixing. Welcome back to Garden of Lights. Today we have blueberries, but we're going to make lemon blueberry trifle, and I am so excited about this little recipe. So simple, so tasty, but so easy. So let's get started. What I have is about four ounces of cream cheese and I did use the light, like you have fat-free light or regular. So I have the light, so I did use that. I'm gonna get my spoon out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my bowl. The next thing that I'm gonna add to the cream cheese, this is about a tablespoon and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Also your cream cheese needs to be room temperature because you are gonna be mixing it. And I'm also going to go ahead and add my one teaspoon of vanilla to this. So that's going to be what I'm going to make one of my layers. So we're going to go ahead and mix this up. And I'm going to start off kind of slow just to make sure I get it mixed up because we're going to add other ingredients to this. And notice I didn't add a lot of sugar. I am using a lighter cream cheese, and if you really were watching your calories, you could use a fat-free cream cheese also. So I'm just going to scrape my edges because I really want to make sure that vanilla and everything is mixed in really well. And that looks good. So now I am going to add about two cups, and this is going to be two cups of Cool Whip. And if you like whipping cream, you could even do whipping cream if you want to, to substitute, but this is gonna be Cool Whip. And I also use the, use the light um, Cool Whip. So I'm gonna add this to it, cause this is gonna be one of my layers. So I've gotta get it started first because it is actually gonna be one of my first layers. So I'm gonna move this 
inside here. Put my spoon down here. And I'm just gonna kinda mix it in. I don't wanna overdo it, but I do wanna get my cream cheese and all this mixed together because it makes it even tastier. So I'm gonna get this incorporated in. And I'm gonna scrape my sides with my mixer because I do wanna make sure anything on the side is mixed in with it. And this just kinda makes it to where the cream cheese is not just full of just, just cream air and cream cheese. You wanna get a little bit of variety there. So that's the reason why we're gonna add that cream cheese to it. I wanna get that side right there. That looks good. And I'm gonna cut my mixer off. So I have that. So this is the first layer that we're gonna work with. I'm gonna set my mixer down. So we're gonna do a trifle, but I have two ways I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna move this down here just to get this out of the way. And I'm gonna move this in front so you can kind of see what we're gonna do. So I've mixed all this together. You also need a so, you know, you could bake this, but angel food cake is what you're looking for. Also, it's gonna call for two, about two cups of blueberries. I'm gonna save just a little bit for the top. And then I'm also gonna grate just a little bit of lemon on top of it also. So what we're gonna start with is the first layer. And I'm just gonna put this in the bottom, but I'm also gonna make one for Frank and I. So another way that you could do this, and this is just gonna kind of hold everything in the, the base of it. We also have about a cup and a half of lemon curd, and I'm gonna use that to add to the next layer. So I wanna get this as much as possible at the base. So I'm gonna spread it around. I might add just a little bit more because I've got plenty of this. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. All right, so what I wanna do too, so I'm gonna do two time, and I'm gonna be doing this at the same time. I'm gonna make a small one too for Frank and I if I can get this off the spoon. And I'm just gonna make a little small one for us to eat later. So let's start off with this one. That went better. So I'm gonna work two places. So now I have the lemon curd and I will tell you, I love lemon. So I could eat lemon any way you wanna get it. Also lemon curd, you can make it yourself, but we're just gonna use it this way. And what I'm gonna do is just kinda drop it. And if you can kinda keep it together, you can kinda smooth it. Oh, it smells really, really good. So I'm just gonna kinda spread it around. Get some more on here. And I'm gonna try to keep it where I can keep it on top of the, the Cool Whip part of it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. And this goes really easy on there. Um, so you just wanna spread it around and try to keep it where you have the layers kind of looking, the different layers. So I've got that done. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit to Frank and ours, just so we have some at the bottom of ours. So we have a little bit of lemon curd at the bottom of ours. Okay, so now you're going to be building your layers. So that's like the first layer. So we put that, that keeps everything kind of stable too and not moving around. So we're gonna do that first. And then we're gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of the berries. So I'm gonna add some berries. And I just love blueberries. So I think I could eat these all the time. Then after the blueberries, I want to get them out to the edge so people can see you have blueberries. We're just going to keep building little layers. Okay, so now we have that. Oops, I want to come back over here and add just a little bit of blueberries to ours. All right, we got that. So now I'm going to start with the cake. So the cake is already chopped up, like I said, so it makes it really easy to put on here as far as making that wonderful layer. So I wanna put about, about that much. And then I'm gonna add some to our small bowls. And see if you had a lot of bowls that you wanted to and make it to where it's an individual dessert, this makes a really nice dessert to add to your meal, whatever you're having. So we've done that. So we're gonna do it again. We're gonna add this other layer. So I'm gonna add this on top of the cake and I'm just going to kind of spread it and the cake um, if you get it kind of right in the center of it you can pretty much push it out so just keep pushing it out like that add some more and to me if you can let it set up for about a day or an hour 
to the next day, to me it's even better because it gives it time to kind of soak in to the other parts of it. All right, now I'm going to add my lemon curd. I'm going to kind of push it in the center, and I'm going to push it out. I'll add just a little bit more. And I love the way it smells. It smells so good. All right, so that looks good. And I am going to add just a little bit of the berries. And I want to get some more on ours, but I'll go ahead and finish this one out just a little bit. And, you know, berries, when you're working with them and you're looking to find the best ones, make sure they're they're, they're um, firm and plump because that's something you want to look to uh, when you're buying them. or if you're picking your own you want to also look at that too. So let me go ahead. I want to do this real quick. I do want to build this a little bit more. I'm just going to stick just a little bit on ours. I'm going to have to use a spoon though. I'm going to have to use my lemon curd spoon just to get it off of there. Alright. I'm going to get just a little bit more here. All right, and then I'm going to put my lemon curd on there. Kind of push it down. I can get it down. There we go. And then I'm going to add just a little bit more berries to ours, and I'm going to make another layer. So as you can see, this is going to be a nice little layer of, of lemon blueberry trifle and so now I have my blueberries and I'm trying to save a little bit of the blueberries for the top so that's what I want to make sure so we're going to add some cake now and I'm going to add a pretty good bit of the cake and I'm going to also push down just a little bit just to get it to where I can get some more on there and I may not be able to get all the cake in this one but that's the reason why I was thinking if you if you have like small ones then you want to do that so now I'm going to add my layer and I'm going to try to get all this in here because this, the cake is really a lot to, um, to put into a trifle. And it depends on what size you have too. And this is not the biggest size that you could possibly put one in. So I do want to get all this wonderful Cool Whip off. I'm going to use my spoon again one more time just to scrape this off. Okay, got that. And let's see if we can spoon this out just a little bit with my cake kind of sticking to my spoon a little bit. And I'm going to use this spoon, I think, just to kind of get it a little bit better. And I'm going to pull it off my finger. Okay, we almost have it there. Let's see if I can move it around just a little bit more. That's good. And then I'm going to add my lemon curd. And this is about all of it. So you can see it, um, it doesn't take much to kind of build the layers. So I want to end with my blueberries because I want to also add a little bit of zest to it with the lemon. So we're going to do that when we get this spread out. This is going really good. It's going to get it out to the edge. And if you can see, it just adds to the color but also adds a wonderful taste as far as the lemon curd goes. So we have that on there. So now I am going to add my blueberries. Kind of put them on top. And I think I'm going to just save a couple of them to put over here in Frank's and ours. I think I can spare those. And then I'm just going to push it out just like that. So I have the blueberries as far as I can get out to make that looks really nice. And also to realize you have blueberry truffle too. So the last thing I'm going to add is a little bit of lemon zest. And if you have, and I have washed the lemon, like I always tell y'all. So if you can just, if you can just kind of do it just a little bit, it's all I'm looking for to give a little bit of color. So I'm just going to kind of go around and this will just kind of add just a little bit to it. Um, and then you can save your lemon to make some lemonade later, but I'm just going to add just a little bit of zest and it's not going to be a lot, but it just kind of adds to the, the color of it. And I'm going to see if I can add just a little bit to Frank and ours too. Oh, this smells really good. This is going to really help as far as the lemon goes. 
So I got just a little bit of lemon zest. I'm gonna try and get just a little bit on ours too. If I can keep it all on my container so I won't have to worry about. It. It's got a little bit on that one. So I'm gonna do a little bit on this one. That should be good. And it just adds a little color to it, makes it look nice. So um, as you can see, this is totally easy to do. Um, it is gonna be so tasty. So when we see you back on Garden Lights, we'll be tasting this. See you back in just a little bit. Welcome back to Garden Delights. Frank, this is gonna be really, really good. It is lemon blueberry trifle, and I can't wait to try it. And I hear you're really good at finding little pests out in the gardens too. We have a lot of fun with leaf-footed bugs every year. You know, they come in, uh, they got these little straw-like uh, mouth parts and they punch holes in the tomatoes and suck the juice out of them and, and then those little places rot. And so they can pretty much ruin your tomatoes mm -hmm. about this time every year when they show up. So we've been using things like salt guns. We shoot them when we walk through there. Then we started vacuum them in the vacuum cleaner. And then we started vacuuming them up and figuring out which pesticide would kill them. Cause I mean, they really do mess up your tomatoes about that. Towards the end of the season, they get really heavy, at least in our garden they do. I know it. And so, yeah, that's what we were doing this morning. I was vacuuming up uh, leaf food bugs. bugs in the garden. I'm just glad they don't get on my blueberries. I don't think they do. I think <laughs> they're too busy on the tomatoes. The blueberries come and go. I know it. While they're still on the tomatoes. Well, let's try this. I am so anxious to try it because I love lemon and I just think lemon and blueberries should go really well together. Mm. That is really good. It is good. And the blueberries are really good. We had a pretty good crop of blueberries this year. We did. Even ours at home look really good. Mm. I'm gonna definitely eat the whole thing, Frank. That is really, really good. As you, you can know. see, I made small ones for Frank and I, and we have a nice size one for your family for later on for dessert. Check out the website, you're gonna love it, and see what you can do as far as making this lemon blueberry trifle. And Frank and I will see you next time on Garden Delights.